So if you ever wanted to put in some nice, clean, scribed line detail on the surface of your stylized characters, well, today I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's get to it. Okay, so I have an example of one of my characters up here that I have some scribed detail lines in his pants along with some colored stripes. Now, if I turn those colored stripes off, you can see the scribed lines that I'm talking about. And those lines work really, really well for 3D printing. They're just subtle enough to be there, but not overbearing, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to make these clean scribed lines today. So let's start with a basic sphere. And this sphere has dynamic subdivisions applied. I don't want dynamic subdivisions, I want real subdivisions. So I'm gonna hit apply. And you might notice that this user interface doesn't look like the generic uh, ZBrush user interface. This is one I've made and I give it away for free along with my brushes. If you like it, you can go grab it over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. The uh, link is in the description below. Okay, so I have this, this sphere and I wanna change the basic material so you can see this a little better. I'm just gonna change it over to basic material. And I'm gonna hit Control D a couple more times because if you look up here to active points, it says that it's about 13,000. We need a lot more geometry than that. So I'm gonna subdivide up to about 800,000, which on this particular sphere, which is a quad sphere, is about 800,000, okay? So now it'll give us the, the detail we need in order to scribe these lines in. Now, speaking of detail, make sure you wait until close to the very, very end of your stylized character production before you put any surface detail on your character. And the reason I say that is because it's kind of one of those finishing touches or uh, the, the icing on the cake, as they say, okay? Or the cherry on top. So you wanna wait, wait. It's, it's hard to wait because it's one of the most fun things you can do when you're creating characters. But be patient. Just wait until the very, very end and then do all your surface details like your uh, noise, your surface noise, scribe lines like this, your coloring, all of that stuff. Wait till the very end. Okay, so I want to, um, you'll see that uh, symmetry is turned off. And the next step that I want to do is I want to store a morph target. Now on my user interface, store morph target is right here. If you don't have this user interface, you can find store morph target under morph target and then store morph target right here under the tool menu. Okay, I'm gonna turn that on. And now all that does is it saves the mesh in a certain state. It remembers what, what's going on. And I'll show you why we store a morph target here in a minute. And um, you'll notice all these custom brushes across the bottom. These are, uh, a lot of these are brushes that I've made or I've made based off of other custom brushes that I've found on, online and have, have adjusted. So you can also get those brushes from my uh, 3D Character Workshop website. Uh, again, link is down in the description. Okay, so um, I used to have a brush called the Carve Brush. And now I have... I've replaced it with this new chisel brush that Pixelogic added to ZBrush. And we're going to be using that one. As, as soon as I click on this brush, you'll notice a lot of different chisel brush profiles across the top. Now, I only really use this first one because it basically does what the old chisel brush did. But now it's so much more controlled and I can overlap strokes over the top of each other without it uh, doubling up on what the brush is doing. Now, if you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, what I mean is I'm gonna grab this cloth brush and I'm gonna hold down Alt so it does the reverse so you can see it better. But if I do a stroke like this and I draw over the top of itself, you'll notice that right where I drew over the top of the stroke, it's doubling up what it did. It's not, it's not going through it, it's actually crawling over the top of it, and that's not what I want. So if I cut into the surface of this object with the chisel brush, you'll notice it has lazy mouse on, that's what that red line is. But as I come around here and cross itself, you'll notice that it doesn't double up the effect of what it's doing. 
it will just cut right through that. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. That means I can go crazy with my scribe lines and not make a mess, essentially. That's the idea anyway. Okay, and I'll make a couple more lines like this, like this, and maybe I'll make one more through them all like so. Okay, now you'll notice that if I get close up with the camera, you'll see that it is quite chunky on the borders. And it's also very sharp. And I don't want either of those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewind back to before I cut in any of these chisel lines. And I'm going to add a layer. And the reason why I like to add layers is I, I usually don't add layers until it's time to add surface detail. And I'll show you why after I add a layer. So again, I have my morph target. I'm going to go down to layers and I'm going to click on this new and it's going to automatically make a new layer and put it in record mode. Okay, that just means everything from here forward, it will be recorded into a layer. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to make uh, that funky design like so and cut across like this, do a couple more cuts. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing here. Let's kind of make this curve like so. Okay, I don't even know what this symbol is, but um, I think it looks kind of cool. So we're going to go with that. And now with layers, what you can do is you can turn the effect down. So I can grab this slider right here and start to drag it towards zero and more towards zero. And you can see the effect that it has. I can make this this cut in the surface very, very subtle. It's really nice. I can do some some really nice stuff with layers and I can go beyond it and actually start to push it out so it's more of an emboss rather than an embed, which is super nice. So I can make some, puff, some puffy lines instead of uh, some, some cuts in the surface. Really cool stuff. But for this, I'm gonna take it back to 100% onto the other side. Now you'll notice when I start to scroll the slider back and forth that it automatically turns off recording. Now I wanna turn that back on because I'm gonna do a few things to sh and, and show you what else I can do with this. Okay, so I'm going to turn record back on and I'm going to go grab this very specific brush called the morph brush. So if I go B, M, and then look for the morph brush in this list, come on, BM, and you'll see it right here. BMG is the, the hotkey for it. Okay, I'm going to click morph brush. And what that does is that's going to pull from memory the morph target and bring it back. So not only does it allow us to uh, draw the stroke over the top of itself without doubling up what's happening, but it also lets us erase the stroke. So what if I want to erase kind of maybe, maybe the ends down here? And basically I can just draw right over the top and it just starts to erase and bring back that the morph, what was underneath it. Sometimes it doesn't always work super clean, but you can see that I can just erase right off the top, just like that. And it's just bringing it back. I'll make a bigger stroke so you can actually see what it does. So you can, I can erase a whole bunch of that. It, it, it works pretty well, but I'm going to undo that. I'll leave the other one there. And now, um, what do you do if you want to get rid of these jaggies? Well, it's super easy. There's a couple things you can do, but the, what I like to do is I like to make my brush really, really big, covering the whole thing and make sure that my uh, smooth intensity is, is high enough that it's going to affect the surface, but I'm just going to barely tap over the surface and smooth it down, just barely, making sure my record is still on on my layer. Otherwise, it's going to affect the layer underneath it. Okay, so you can kind of see that it knocked off those sharp edges and it also smoothed out those jaggies throughout the, the curves there and made it really buttery smooth. And I can, I can do that even down in here because it was still showing some jaggies. And here is my nice detailed surface with some cut lines without it being all jaggedy. And that is essentially whenever I need to cut in some lines into my uh, stylized characters, this is the exact method that I use. So I hope this helps and I hope it gives you some ideas of things that you can do with your characters. If you'd like to see more tips like this, please like and subscribe. And I am Shane Olson. Thank you for watching my channel. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you got something out of this and I'd love to hear what lines and things you would do with your characters 
down in the comments. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Happy sculpting. We'll see you in the next one.